Hello and welcome to lesson 44 of the Learning Guitar series. I hope you had a good Easter break. But that you still practice your pentatonics. Uh, this particular lesson we're going to continue our uh, study of pentatonics and we're going to look at some harmony and theories and how this justifies us moving around our pentatonics in order to have different kind of effects when it comes to major, minor, and dominant seven chords. It's actually, uh, the logic behind it is actually easier than me talking about it, so in a second we're going to look into it. Uh, this lesson might be, uh, if it ends up being too long, I might cut it into two different parts, but um, what's important, and the reason it might be long, is because I really want you to understand the theory behind this kind of uh, har harmony and theory application and how, you know, we can take scales and use it in different ways in order to get different sounds. And the reason I'm using the pentatonic as a, as a first example is um, it's because pretty much like a minor pentatonic is something that um, a lot of guitar players are familiar with. But whatever I'm going to explain to you in this uh, lesson with regards to harmony and theory applies to pretty much any scale you want to think of, you know. Anyway, let's delve into it straight away so that, uh, you know, I don't confuse you further. So I have here uh, some fretboards and what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to use a reference point. In this case, I'm going to use like a C and we're going to think of C as our uh, root note, okay? Now we know, because we did it last, you know, last time, last lesson, is that we can use, you know, C major pentatonic, if this was a C major chord. And uh, if we wanted to use the relative minor, we could use A minor pentatonic, because A is, you know, the sixth of C. So let's put down, I'm going to, I'm going to do it in minor, because, you know, it's probably the scales that, you know, everybody knows. And if I write it down here, and you can see the intervals, this is generating because this is our root note. Okay, this is A minor pentatonic or C major pentatonic is the same, you know, like in this case, actually this is a C major pentatonic because the root note is on C. If the root note was on A minor, I'll show you actually, let's do it this way so you can see it. If this was the root note, suddenly you have one flat three, four, five, flat seven. I mean, we discussed this in our previous lesson, so probably no point in talking about it again. But as you can see, this is A minor pentatonic. And if I switch back where C major, C is the root note, is the same finger pattern, obviously. And, you know, just the, the, the intervals take different names. But what's important for us, what, what, I, what I want us to understand, okay, is the intervals we're generating. If we're playing this over C major as a chord, okay, I'm playing the root note, the third, still part of the chord, the fifth, so like this is one, three, five, it's literally C major. I'm adding a sixth or a thirteen, if you prefer to use compound intervals, and a second. So when I'm using this particular scale over this chord, so like in this case, as I said, we're looking at C major, which is right here, okay? I'm adding some effects to it, okay? I'm adding a 9 and I'm adding a 13. If I loop a C major chord, let's have a look. And so, of course, you know, sounds good. <laughs> Basically using like A minor pentatonic or C major pentatonic over a C major chord. Is that all there is to it? Not really. Now, let me let me first show you where we're going with it, and then I'll, just, I'll explain you the theory behind it. So let's delete this. And let's also delete this. Uh, no. Let's use instead of A minor pentatonic, let's use E minor pentatonic. Okay? I'm going to write it here. Here is your 
E minor, E, and this is E minor pentatonic. I could have done it here, my fret zero. And of course, if I say E minor pentatonic and G major pentatonic is the same. So if you look at it from this point of view, if this is the root note, so as you can see, one flat three, four, five flat seven, this is E minor pentatonic, okay? Right now, this is not important because what's important for us is that this is the root note. We are still playing C major, okay? And if I play E minor pentatonic instead of A minor pentatonic like I did before, now the intervals I get, I get the major seven from a C point of view, I get the nine, the second, from a C point of view, the third is still there, the fifth is still there, and the sixth is still there, okay? So I get a different kind of effect. I'm still using a minor pentatonic scale, but I'm getting a different kind of effect by using in this case, E minor pentatonic instead of A minor pentatonic, because suddenly the major seven comes into play. Let's again loop a C chord. As you can see, like now the major seven as an interval brings a different flavor to our soloing in this case. A lot of chords is still the same. So I have C major and I can play A minor pentatonic. Or I can play E minor pentatonic. They're both valid, they get us different sounds. So I'm basically moving pentatonics around. And of course, like in time, I'll design some exercises where we all will we will also be combining them, okay? Let's, let me show you just one more example and then we'll delve into the harmony and theory behind it. Let's uh, delete this. And let's use B minor pentatonic, okay? So this is what B minor pentatonic will look like. Of course, here I'm writing the shapes that probably like you're familiar with, but I give for granted that, you know, we're still discussing a pentatonic in five shapes, so you can cover the entire neck of the guitar. Now let's look at the interval. From, again, C is our reference, so all these intervals refer to this, okay? So the B note actually is a major seven from the perspective of C. Now we have a second, we have a ninth, a major third, now we have a sharp four, and if you remember when we studied modes, now our sh sharp four brings a flavor that we call Lydian. Because if you look at the Lydian mode, uh, it's got one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, major seven. Again, we have the sixth here, so the 13. So now we have like a seven, nine, sharp four, 13. We have basically the upper structure the, all the upper structure of a linear mode. Rhythm. So the moment I play B minor pentatonic over C major, I'm going to sound Lydian. Let's hear it. So, as you can see so far, we have learned that, say for a major chord, 
I don't have only the major pentatonic that goes with it, like say C major, I have C major pentatonic. Actually, so far I have three different pentatonics. In the case of C, we find out that A minor would work, E minor would work, and B minor pentatonic would work. And if I want to translate all this into major pentatonics, okay, we know that C major would work, we know that G major pentatonic would work, and the last was B, so we know that D major pentatonic would work. And, you know, by the end of this lesson, I'll give you a few tips so now you can remember this thing, not just necessarily the key of C. Now we're looking at C, that's our reference point, but, you know, as I say, this is armor in theory, so it applies to all keys. Now, let's let's have a look at that armor in theory. I mean, like, it's, it's somehow simpler than you think, and it's, 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 it's got more to do with understanding you know, that music is made of intervals, and these intervals can apply to certain chords. Um, let me delete this too. Let's start from... Okay, ask yourself. I have a C major. Let's say that the chord is C major. We're dealing with major chords. So, you know, imagine this. That's C major. Okay? I'm not going to keep all these numbers here so that you can look at the scale, but the chord is C major, okay? The question is, what happens if I play C minor pentatonic over it, okay? And this is what C minor pentatonic will look like. And, you know, you should quickly come to the conclusion, okay, you know, maybe if you're playing jazz, fair enough, and you want to create some alterations, some very strong alterations, fair enough. But, you know, in a context of more, you know, moderate use, when we look into jazz in the future, you know, we might use this, but this particular scale, from a C perspective, has got a flat three, and flat three for us most of the time it means minor. When, you know, so we might not want to apply this to a major chord. It also got a flat seven in there, while a major chord might want a major seven. We know the Ionian is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In case you forgot, I'm gonna write it here. This is our Ionian scale, and these are the intervals you know, of it. Oops, sorry. And we know that, you know, eventually if we want like another major scale that would apply comfortably, it would be the one with a sharp four, okay? Which is, you know, Lydian, mode number four. If you don't know what, you're, what I'm talking about right now, and, you know, this is the first time you see any of my lessons, you might want to go back and, you know, go from the beginning eventually or look at Lydian. Anyway, so I'm going to ask myself, okay, can, can I use C minor over a C major chord? And, you know, in this case, for now, the answer is no. Because it's got a flat 3, it's got a flat 7, it doesn't really work. Okay, let me try C sharp. So I'm literally going to go a semitone up and play a pentatonic minor. This is C sharp pentatonic minor. And again, I'm going to look at uh, the intervals. The intervals are generated from this spot. Now I have a flat 6, a major 7, okay, all good so far. This is a flat 2, or we can call it a flat 9. I have a sharp 4. Now this is going to be quite a, a difficult sound because of the flat 9, but as a matter of fact, I can use this. It's got a major 7, fair enough. It's got a 3. It's got the element of a major if that makes, you know, if you understand what I'm saying. What it doesn't have, it's got a kind of like a very strong alteration because it's got the Lydian sound here, and this is literally an alteration. This is something that it will, if, if we do a melodic minor, harmonic minor, you'll see that there is a chord where we can have a major with a sharp five. So as a sound, it's gonna be, it's gonna be quite harsh, but Say again, like if you're into jazz and fusion stuff, and if you can negotiate it, why not? Let's see what it sounds like, you know, this is the easiest thing to do. As you can see, this is a very difficult sound. I mean, it's quite altered, and you know, and and mainly is because 
you know, out of a five notes of a pentatonic, the sharp four, of course, it's got the Lydian sound, but then you have a flat nine, and then you have a sharp five. I mean, these are all alterations. The flat nine will be here, so like we know it doesn't belong. The flat six will be here, so you see like we're playing out of five notes, three don't really belong to Ionian, okay? Let's move on. Let's see what D minor gives us. Let me delete this. I hope you're starting to understand the logic behind because, you know, as I said, I, I can just give you the answer. I could, I could just give you the answer. So like when it comes to a major chord, you can use this, this, and that pentatonic. When it comes to minor, you can use this, this, and that. When it comes to dominant seven, you can use this, this, and that. But that would be kind of, I don't know, talking about guitar in a, in a dogmatic way. If you understand the logic behind of what I'm doing, you could take a Dorian scale and do the same process, and, and you will realize that there is several Dorian, you know, several keys of a Dorian scale you can use. Okay, same thing with the pentatonic. I'm just starting this kind of concept, so you can use of what harmony theory can be about, which makes harmony theory interesting as opposed to complicated, like some people tend to think of it. Um, and, you know, you can do it yourself at some point. You know, as I say, this is somehow it's maths and understanding of intervals. So let's have a look. D minor pentatonic. This is what D minor looks like. It gives us a sixth. So a 13, that's all good. The root note, the 9, that's all good. The 4th, that's so good, still good. 5th, 6th, so D minor is pretty usable. Now, the 11th, so the 4th, is always a very... It's, it's, a, it's a difficult sound to negotiate over a major. Because the 11 feels like a suspended chord, as you know, the fourth, every, you know, suspended four, suspended 11. And generally, major chords are the chords where we want to resolve our progression. So, like a two, five, one, whatever that is. I mean, you know, a major chord feels like a, a resting point, while the fourth makes it feel like it's not resting yet. Nevertheless, Stella Basta Light, the famous jazz tune, has got a fourth in the melody. Sounds beautiful. So, you know. I'm not going to be the one saying, oh, you cannot use the minor because of the fourth. Let's see what it sounds like, you know, but you can definitely use it. That's the sound I'm talking about. So definitely usable, and you have this kind of 11th kind of sound. Some of you will love it, some of you will not like it, but it's important that you remember, okay, can I use it? So let's go in here for a second and let's start writing it down so we remember. Of course, at some point we will, uh, trust, we will describe it in other keys. Let me delete this. So for C major, C major, we can use, okay, D minor, pentatonic. And it, and that's good, okay? Let me make this a little bit smaller so it can fit more stuff. We tried D minor. Let's go with E flat minor now. And without wanting to waste too much of your time, as you can see, like, this is, uh, sorry, E flat, E flat minor pentatonic. If this is the root note, this is the flat three, etc., etc. As you can see, flat three really doesn't fit our major kind of feel. Sharp four, again, we're Lydian, but then you have a flat seven, a flat nine, a sharp five. Basically, this is only one note. It, they're all the alterations, literally. If I place them here, that's your flat seven. That's your sharp four. That's uh, your flat seven. That's your, you know, your sharp five, flat six. That's your flat two. Basically, you're only playing alterations. So again, if you are, if you are a, a real hardcore uh, jazz player who wants to alterate major chords, E flat minor pentatonic over C definitely does it. Uh, we know because we did it before. 
Anyway, I'm going to write it down anyway. So here we have our, oops, this is E minor pentatonic. And we know we can use it. It's got a major seven and nine, beside the three and the five. Okay, that, you know, one, three, five, that's our major chord. But, you know, we got nine, the seven, and the 13. So let's write it down. Oops. E minor pentatonic. And just, you know, as a favor, we know it gives us a major seven. It gives us a 9, and it gives us a 13. Remember, 6 and 13, 2 and 9 are the same thing, okay? And I should have done this before, too. Oops. If I do it for D minor, this is D minor pentatonic, okay? You get the 9, 13, and 11, okay? So again, let's write it here. You got a nine, 11, and 13 kind of effect, okay? Let's delete this. As I said, sorry if I'm, this is gonna take a little bit of time. We're going through all the keys, obviously, but it should be obvious by now. But as I said, so this way you, you will remember the logic of it, okay? This is F minor pentatonic. And if I look at the intervals, again, I have a flat three spelled, you know, smells a minor, flat six, flat seven. The only notes in common with Ionian, oh, let me delete this. The only notes in common with Ionian, you know, is basically the first and the fourth. The rest is alteration. So I'd rather not use it. After F minor, we have F sharp minor pentatonic, which is, I'll write it here. <laughs> sharp four, okay, Lydian, not bad. Sixth, 13, seal, we have it. Major seven, definitely we have it. Flat nine, okay, that's tough, okay, and major three. So if you use an F sharp over a C major chord, three of the notes that actually belong belongs to Ionian, and then you have the sharp four that gives you a, a Lydian kind of flavor, and then you have literally an alterations, which would be flat too. Again, you can try and see, uh, see if you can make it work. Personally, I can't. Let's delete this. Uh, G minor. I can already tell you, see, flat seven is here. It's a flat seven, it's an alteration, it's, as you can see, doesn't belong to Ionian. We're gonna skip it for now. Maybe in the future we might use it. A flat minor. Okay, I already have flat three, flat six, flat two, and these are all alterations compared to Ionian. I have basically just in sharp four. After that, we have A minor, and we know that A minor works. Okay, this is A minor pentatonic. And you get first, third, and fifth. That's, you know, part of the chord. And the, 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 the colors you get is a 9 and 13. So this one, we're definitely, we're definitely going to use it. So let's write it here. A minor pentatonic. And we get a 9 and a 13 kind of effect. B flat, I can, I, you know, could stop right here. You know, that's the interval of flat 7, flat 3, okay, sharp 5. It's not going to work over major. B, we know that we can use it, we did it before, and it gives us a Lydian sound, okay? <clears throat> so if you want to have that kind of Lydian sound, this would be your choice. Let me write it down. B minor, pentatonic, over a major chord, is going to give us a major seven, 
9, sharp 11, and 13. So as you can see, this is literally all the upper structure of a, the linear mode, while this is all the upper structure of, uh, well, all beside the major 7, of Ionian, okay? We have been through all 12 keys. Basically, we have taken a minor pentatonic, played it in all keys, and checked what kind of intervals it generated, given that we're using as a reference. In this case, we're using C major. So I literally went through you know, all the pentatonics, having this sound as a background, okay? And turns out the ones which are more usable uh, which contain as less alterations as possible, in a way. Uh, in the case of C, if you want to look at it from the point of view of a minor pentatonic, are this one. D minor, E minor, A minor, and B minor. If you wanted to look at it from a major perspective, so we know that D minor pentatonic is basically F major pentatonic, okay? If that's you know, if you prefer to use major pentatonics, if you were to think, because actually the notes are exactly the same. So for E minor is basically G major pentatonic. A minor would be the equivalent of C major pentatonic. And for B minor, you would have the equivalent is D major pentatonic. There is no one right way to do this. If you prefer to think of it in terms of minor pentatonics, great. A lot of people do, a lot of guitar players do, because generally that's the first thing we learn and we're playing the blues and it's only minor pentatonics. It's fault in minor pentatonics. But as I said, the major pentatonics, if you prefer to think it major, as in you see a C major, you're playing a C major chord, then you want to play, you know, you want to think C major pentatonic. The notes are still the same, okay? So it doesn't really matter. Um, now, in terms of remembering this, instead, like it might be easier if, let's take this. This is our reference point. Now, what I'm gonna put is not necessarily intervals. I'm gonna put the starting point of potential pentatonics. What I mean by that is if I look at B minor, Basically, I'm starting a minor pentatonic, a semitone down from whatever the chord that I'm, major chord that I'm negotiating. In other words, what I'm trying to say is, let me remove the root note. Um, if, if I was playing here, this is E major, okay? And I wanted to sound using a pentatonic, a sound lydian. Okay, my minor pentatonic will start from here. And, you know, it will look like this, right? Is not this included? Does it make sense? So, for uh, say, like you know, for D major, a semitone down is C sharp. For you know, F major, a semitone down is E. Now, where you execute it doesn't matter. I'm assuming you know five shapes of pentatonics. Okay, so you can cover the entire neck of the guitar. But if that's what's the chord, that this is C major, if F major seven, a semitone down is E. Now I can do it. You see how it sounds. That's E minor pentatonic. Okay, so it, it, it's useful to have these references so that you know we can uh, think of what kind of pentatonics we can use against the major chord, independently from you know. Uh, a specific key. Now, in this case, just to explain the theory, I did it in C, but if I start thinking, okay, it's a semitone below from the major chord, now whatever major chord, you know, E flat, okay, the semitone down is D. So, we know from C, we could use, so let me, let me do this this way, we could go semitone down, and we get this, basically, this idea, the B minor pentatonic. I can go a uh, sixth up, or you know, if you prefer to see it this way, that's the sixth, and that's where I have a minor pentatonic. Okay. Uh, I can go E minor, which is like a, a major third above, or you can see it this way. 
and play mana pentatonic, or you know, if you want to use the mana pentatonic, you can literally go a semitone up. So if you see it this way, okay, if this is your reference point, this is the chord, you know now where you can start your minor pentatonics. So that's B minor, that's E minor pentatonic, A minor pentatonic, and D minor pentatonic. D minor pentatonic might, you know, try and see if you can make it musical. You know, I'm not gonna, you know. What's interesting though, is say, let me move this for a second, is to see it this way. Because one thing that you can do is also mix and match this pentatonic. So I could start from B minor, going into A minor, and go back and forth and use parallel phrasing. What I mean by that? That if this is the chord and I have enough space in the music, say I have maybe two bars of this, or four bars of this, I can move back and forth between, say for example, B minor and A minor and use phrases which move in parallel. So I can repeat the same thing, the same line, and just go up and down, like literally a tone, tone up and down. Um, and I can still use, you know, the blues phrasing. Once you start moving pentatonics around, you can still keep it. It's gonna sound different. Let's let me show, let me give you an example. So as you can see, the same pentatonic <coughs> shape, okay, played, displaced around, moved around, gives a different effect, even if you use the same phrase like I did at the end, you know. An E minor. So now, next time you play a major chord and you're, you know, taking a solo with it, you don't have just one option, okay? You don't have just, you know, C major, C major pentatonic, or the relative minor, A minor pentatonic. You have three, four options, and my suggestion is that uh, if you're not used to the sound of, you know, some of these extensions, like nines, uh, 13s, major seven, etc., simply loop, take a phone, you know, just loop a C major chord, or any key you want, really. Like, like, but if I was to do this in D again, if this is in D, the relative minor is B, so B minor would work. E minor would work, so like a tone up, a sixth, a semitone up below, so C sharp would work, and a third major up, so from D I'm in F sharp. If, for me, it's easy to see it this way. These are the starting point. These are all pentatonics that will work on, on, on D major. Let us say the semitone down, whatever visually you can put together in terms of having references, okay? If, uh, if, uh, if the chord, the root note of the chord you're playing, say G major, is on the first string, again, the semitone down will be F sharp, a third up would be B, a sixth 
you can see it like a three semitone below or if you prefer this so the sixth is a z and a tone up is a so this become your references for where you can you know the keys of your pentatonic minors that you can use I hope this makes sense. As I said, this was going to be long because I wanted to explain the logic how I got to these results. <clears throat> and eventually when we do uh, minor chords and dominant seven chords, I might not need to do this again. Now, like, you know, by now, you know, I'm just taking a scale using a reference point and see what intervals it gives me. In this case, I only extracted the ones that gave me intervals which are sympathetic to Ionian or Lydian, so something that I can apply to a major chord. We're going to do exactly the same, and the next time we're going to look at intervals that are sympathetic to minor, so to Dorian or Aeolian, etc. And then we'll look at the dominant seven, which is the one which is probably going to give us the most fun, because there are so many things we can do with that, especially once you start thinking in terms of jazz and alterations and fusion, and we're going to start talking about that, because I think it's about time. Um, as I said, as in, as 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 uh, exercise, I'm gonna write some exercises in the future, uh, just for this. But the best thing you can do to get used to certain sounds is literally loop a, a major chord, whatever you want, uh, and take one of the pentatonics. So, let's say if you were to loop uh, C major, play a bit with A minor pentatonic, five shapes, so you get used to the sound of it. Probably you are already. And um, then say take B minor pentatonic, which you might be less familiar with. That's your ears are not trained for it. So at first you might feel like the notes you're playing they're wrong in a way. But stick with it. Spend some time just trying to create melodies. That's you know your shop. as much time as possible, say like five minutes, 10 minutes, force yourself to use just that pentatonic because in time, those new sounds, you know, nines, thirteens, sharp fours, sharp elevens, you'll start getting familiar with them. They start, <clears throat> they will start becoming part of your personal vocabulary. It would be wrong of me to tell you what you should use. That's the entire point of spending so much time just to explain you this. Somebody else might just tell you, okay, these are three pentatonics you can use, and they're correct. But as I said, I don't mind digging into harmonic theory. Also to, you know, demystify this idea that harmonic theory is complicated. This is not complicated, really. I mean, I, I hope I'm, I, 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 I put it down in layman terms, and sorry if the lesson is long. Um, as I said, I'm going to post some, uh, eventually some exercises on, on Patreon. Uh, thanks to the people who are supporting this project on Patreon, it's not many of you, and you know I really appreciate uh, you supporting this idea of mine. And um, if you have any question or comment, as usual, uh, please uh, feel free to send me a message, leave a comment on on YouTube, or you know send a message on Patreon. I'm more than happy to 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 answer them. And uh, well. Until next time, start working on this. Is you know, three weeks until next lesson. It feels like a long time, but it's not when you're trying to get some new sounds in. You know, uh, of course, you can always use all the exercises uh, I wrote when we were studying major pentatonics. You know, minor pentatonics. You know, the last three lessons. There is a bunch of exercises you can do to actually learn the five shapes, but not just up and down, you know, intervallic. Those that know me by now, you know exactly what I mean, okay? Anyway, as usual, as an Italian, I can talk a lot. It's been a pleasure, and until next time, bye.